Hello, everybody. I'm Jeff Watson. This is Tal Morris, and the booth is Smitty Howell. We're doing this for the PE exclusives on Grammy 365. We're going to be starting with acoustic guitar miking techniques. On this guitar right now, we have an MXL 604, and we have the Telefunken. Which uh, model is this? 260. The 260, and we're also running a direct feed from the guitar. And these will be mixed according to our ears once we get into the mix mode of the performance. We're going to test and show you the sound difference of each microphone. And I'm just going to play the same thing over and over again. And we'll start with the Telefunken. And I'll just strum something very simple. So that's the Telefunken. Now we move to the MXL. Same performance. And now we'll move to the direct sound, which is the piezo pickup in the bridge. Love that song. That's great. <laughs> well, it's it's going to be a hit. That's a hit. That's a hit. So if you have one microphone to choose from, and you're going to use a, you know, just basically a microphone into whatever recording gear you have, placing a microphone of what you have on the 12th fret is going to give you the most consistent results. We like to have it on a stand because sometimes when you're performing your body may move and you may, uh, if you were in a chair, you would move the proximity effect from the micro with the microphone to the guitar but when it's on the stand it becomes much more consistent. You know, I have to, I have to adapt what I'm doing for the microphone and that because the stand is uh, stationary the microphone gets the benefit of the situation rather than what I'm doing. So it's a little harder for the player, but it's better for the it's sound. It's better for the sound and for it's the performance, yes, yeah. Is. And also, this is all experimentation based on the, the, sound, the song that you're doing. You might want to have a more uh, focused mid-range tone. You might want to have a more bass uh, sound. And that's why we have multiple microphones and, and um, uh, the direct feed from the, direct from, feed from from the, the guitar. Pickups. Because depending on the, the moment in the song, because we want it to be placed perfectly, you, want, you don't want to do a lot of EQ or, or manipulation of the sound if you can help it when you're mixing. You want to try and get it right before you, before you start the mixing process. Yeah. And having the, all these types of these uh, different options uh, allows you to choose that sort of thing rather than create it in the mix. With most guitars you get these days, I mean, at a certain level above, above a couple hundred dollars, you're going to have an internal pickup. And seriously, if you don't have nice microphones or a great facility to work with and record with, that you can get a nice sound coming directly out of the guitar. And you can modify that so nicely in Pro Tools or Logic or whatever platform you're recording on to make it sound pretty decent. I mean, this is getting pretty extreme, but when we do albums, we'd like to get as many options as we can for the best sound we can accomplish. Because there's no one way to record yeah. any source of audio. It's up to your ears, and that's the magic of producing and creating music. If it sounds good to you, it is good. That's basically the rule. I'm Jeff Watson, and one of my earlier gigs was a band called Night Ranger that we started in 1980. And this is an old Guild 12 string that I used for all the acoustic parts on all those early albums. And we're miking this again with a Telefunken and the MXL604. I'm not using a direct feed from this guitar because at the time it did not have one. And this is um, still the same miking technique, right off the 12th fret and off the body of the guitar, but I'm going to do some flat picking. And this is what I used to do a lot of back when I was young. And that's exactly as we recorded it back in the days, in the early 80s. And that was on the album Seven Wishes, I believe. That was Goodbye. And this is the actual guitar we used on the Night Ranger records. 
And a good story about this is I was actually kind of broke starting the band, we all were, and I sold it to Sammy Hagar for a while. <laughs> and then eventually bought it back from him for the same price because he's a good guy. And with the mic, here we go. <laughs> We'll be comparing those mic sounds once we get inside the control room. And I just hit the microphone. That's what we do in the studio. We bump these, make sure that we're okay. I'm Jeff Watson, and this is Tal Morris, and the booth is Smitty Hell. We're here for Grammy 365. This is the Peony Wing Exclusives. We're doing microphone placement and techniques, and this one is on electric guitar. We're using a Marshall amplifier through a 412 cabinet. I'm plugging through my favorite new toy in the world, the Joe Meek compressor. This is unbelievable. I have many compressors and toys, but that one is turning out to be the most amazing ever. And um, I'm using a Line 6 delay um, on the effects loop of the Marshall just for my, to make my ears happy. We have, uh, we've picked our favorite speaker. It's important when you use a large cabinet to choose your favorite speaker, and we've chosen this one. And we have three different microphones, a ribbon mic, an SM57, which every guitarist who's miking uh, electric guitar should have. And we have a large diaphragm microphone as well. As Tell said, the Shure SM57 is the standard of the industry. Yes. If you don't have one of those, you're probably not in the music And if you're going to choose one microphone to own, to, own to, to mic guitar cabinets, that's the one. The SM57. However, yes. the ribbon microphone captures the body that we want. The SM57 captures the attack and the upper mids. And the large MXL is capturing more of the, the roundness of the entire cabinet. Is yeah. that, that's our hope anyway. We'll find out once we mix the faders and find out where we are with the sound. Our ears will do that decision making for us. When, a, let's say, a solo is happening, you can actually, in real time, fade in and out different microphones. This was a technique that uh, Eddie Kramer used with Jimi Hendrix. He had a lot of microphones. Uh, capturing at different distances at Jimi Hendrix's cabinets and we're kind of emulating that here and as the performance goes with regard to like emotional peaks and valleys you can choose which microphone you want to accentuate in real time and create a very sure. 3D effect and that's why we use uh, multiple microphones here so we're gonna turn and with, this on. And with, with the advent also of Pro Tools and Logic and all the different recording platforms you can automate those, those fader yeah, moves, exactly. which makes life quite a bit easier as opposed to using a full real console. We have both options in here, but we will be using Pro Tools for this today. And so this let's, might let's, be a little bit loud. Let's hear some sound. Let's hear some. It sounds like a hum to me. Oh, that's beautiful. What do you think? <laughs> Thank you. 